I'm Tiffany, and welcome to Brokerl Aesthetic. On this channel, I'll be posting some DIYs, thrift flips, renos, and more. So if you like that type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be alerted to my new uploads. Hey y'all, welcome back. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an item that I showed off in my thrift haul video, uh, my first one that was posted on my channel last week. Um, so it's this rattan placemat, uh, hot pad, whatever. I mean, it's so vintage, right? And you see them all the time at the secondhand shop. So I thought, well, you know, if there's something I can do with this. I don't know what, but hey, I'm going to find out. So let's get into it. All right. So here's the mat. Just plain the way it is. Uh, that little twist ties there for I hung it up on the line uh, on the wall to get an idea where I wanted it so what I'm going to do is section off like a pie and I'm going to take these cords that I coffee stained uh, I used some coffee stained and some plain white uh, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap around the outside now it's just Dollar Tree I'm sorry not Dollar Tree Family Dollar clothesline and uh, it has like a, a rolled fabric core that I took out uh, just to have the, the little nylon wrapping. But I soaked in coffee stain for about, oh gosh, I don't know, like two, three hours, right? Um, just to see if it would work. So I threaded it through. I used a paper clip, threaded it through uh, because it's not solid. It's just, you know, woven. And just taking hot glue to tack down the the end there so it'll secure it so I can wrap it around <clears throat> so the coffee stain um, I didn't rinse it out I just wrung it out with my hands after I let it soak there for a while um, I had experimented with it before wringing it out kind of rinsed it out and I wanted it to be a deeper color so I just went ahead and wrung it out and then I just left it out to air dry. Now, you could probably take a heat gun to it, a hair dryer, you know, maybe you could even press it like between you know, two other pieces of fabric just to set that in there. I didn't, but I wasn't really worried about it. As a matter of fact, it's it smells amazing because you know I, I didn't rinse it out or anything I just soaked it in the in the coffee and um, <laughs> by the time I got done working on this piece listen, my hands just smell fantastic it just smell like coffee um, I used hot coffee too fresh fresh out of the pot and maybe that helped set the stain in mm, maybe I, I hope so I, I wasn't too sure it would take because of the other than I guess it's nylon or polyester or whatever it is I wasn't too sure the stain would take but it did so here I am finishing up the wrapping and this is how I'm going to secure the end I just <laughs> shove it back and let me tell you whoever made these things they did a heck of a job because it's very tight they they they, they weave those bits in there and it's pretty tight so had a little struggle getting that piece through there but then I just kind of gave it a you know I kind of looped it under there <clears throat> and then I'll go ahead and take hot glue of course and tack that down I really wanted to uh, do something different all this stuff I had on hand I didn't buy well I didn't buy anything else for this. Uh, I had the idea and I mentioned to my mom that I thought the cotton clothesline would work because I know that the dollar store, sometimes Dollar General has it, sometimes Family Dollar has it. Those are the only two stores we have in this town that have anything like that cheap. And she ended up getting this stuff for me. She brought it to me. <clears throat> but everything else I had on hand. So just go ahead, hot glue that, trim it, 
and I'm going to do that in alternating patterns around about three-fourths of this mat. I'm not going all the way around. So I'll go tan and then I'll use the white and repeat that pattern. So here I've started with the white. And it's strange because um, I, I took that core out of, of, the, of the rope, but after I stained pieces with the coffee, it almost, I don't know, there wasn't, you know, it's just straight coffee, but it kind of stiffened that up a little bit, and then this plain white cord was really a lot easier to work with. Um, I don't know if it, just because of the way it dried or, or what, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Apparently I'm out of frame there. So I'm trying to keep it like, I, I don't want it to get twisted, I'm trying to make it like flat. Which I struggled with at the beginning, but once I got part way through I finally found my groove and was able to continue on pretty quickly. I apologize if you see bouncing my my phone rig that I have. It's not the sturdiest. I mean, <laughs> it's just it is a family dollar tripod. Well, it's not even a tripod, really. You clip your phone in it, and it it's bendable, and it has a ring light attached, and you clip it to the side of your, you know, you just clip it to your desk or table or whatever. It's a neat item, but it's kind of flimsy. And here we go. Now I have all of those finished. As you can see, I've gone around. Now I'm, I'm tracing out a design that I had, I had been playing with. There's the design. I just used regular chalk, and now I'm going to take my uh, painter's tape to tape off the area. I, I sketched some stuff in my notebook. I wanted it to be a, of a boho theme, but I didn't want to do the standard that that I that I see everywhere, right? Um, I, w I went and looked at some different websites, too, to, to kind of get inspiration. Um, this whole piece, I guess, is kind of anthropology-inspired, although I didn't really find anything quite like it on anthropology's website. Um, I didn't see anything on West Elm either, or Wayfair, or any of these, any of the other higher end decor places. But I'd say Anthropology is probably this. So, if I was going to call it a dupe for anything, I guess it would be that. Um, but I came up with a, a design that I hadn't, I didn't see. I don't think I saw. I mean, it's possible I've seen it, and I just don't recall where I found it. So yeah, I'm gonna tape off the areas with the with the biggest, and then uh, I'll freehand the lines, the other lines that there are. I'm not a painter. I'm not a professional in any way. This <laughs> I haven't even done any kind of artwork or a piece of art remotely like this and I couldn't even tell you how long. So yeah, I've just got some little acrylic, I, I got a little tube of acrylic white paint. Stuff I picked up at the Dollar General for, I don't know, I might have picked it up for the kids, it might have been for me, but it's been probably a year or so. Oh, I got it to do uh, nail art because I do, um, I do gel and acrylic, but I got it for nail art. But I've never used it for that, so. <laughs> and I needed white paint desperately, and I that's all I had, so. Um, this is the first coat of paint. And I considered leaving it, just, um, just only doing the one coat, but it didn't. 
it blended too well with the rattan. It, it, it didn't stand out as much as I wanted it to. I'm going at the bottom. And believe it or not, it actually... And you'll see at the end, but the bottom half and the top half are not too far off, actually. And it kind of looks like they are, but when you look at it as a whole, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be too much off. I, I might be wrong. I know you can let me in the let me know in the comments below if I, if I just really messed it up. Again, not a professional. <laughs> So there's the finished design. It's a sun and a moon and a, I don't know, a V-shape. So I'm taking these longer lengths of this uh, clothesline and I'm going to let them hang. So I guess it's inspired by a dream catcher in a way. I'm, I, I, yeah, I guess that, that's exactly what it is. It was inspired by dream catchers. Um, I've got a, a giant dream catcher on my wall. My kids have all had dream catchers. I mean, I'm, I'm big on having a dream catcher by the bed. So this, it's not intended to be a dream catcher. It's not intended to be a native piece either. Um, just uh, something with a boho feel to it. And uh, that's, so I just loop it around through there and pull it. And, and that's it. I mean, it, it, it's no more trouble than that. Again, using a paper clip to shove it through there. Um, and I do a few, a few tan coffee stained strands and a few plain white strands. And I fill in the rest with the tan. So I want to give it a little bit, you know, carry that, carry that theme around that's, that's around it into the, into the hangy bits there. If there's a name for it, I don't know what they are. Just tassels, hang it, uh, strands. I don't know. I see. I did it backwards. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> now we got it. That's, that's right. So there's, there's a few strands there and I, I go in and I change things up a little bit here and there as I'm going along. Never made anything like this before. So as I was working, I was like, you know, I think I need another, I need, think I need another strand here. And I ended up moving the, the portion on the outside. I ended up wrapping one more so I would have an even amount. Yeah, my camera. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I tried to edit bits out, but I missed some apparently. So I'm coming in with the white, again, bringing it through, looping it, and I don't, I, I don't super glue any of this. I just leave it. I just loop it. I mean, I'm just going to hang on a wall. I'm not going to carry it around or anything. And if I could have probably gone without super gluing the strands that I wrapped on the edges, but they like fray when you breathe on them practically and... <laughs> I didn't think it would look too great on the outside or on the, you know, on the edge there. Now the bottom part of these strands, I mean, if it frays out a little bit, I don't, I mean, they're already frayed and I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I'll cut it, I'll cut it off and cut it into shape, but you know, if it frays over time, it's just going to add to it, you know? So it's just... Adding more there and then coming back and repeating on both sides. And now I'll fill in the rest with the remaining tan pieces. So there it is. I've got all those lined up in there. And now here comes the final step. I'm going to make feathers. Now, um, I watched a tutorial from a little bit of Common Crazy, and she did some feathers um, 
you want to hear videos and I will link that in the description box below uh, and you can go check that out. So I kind of, I kind of followed her tutorial a little bit. Um, just the actual making of the, th the feathers part is what I followed. Um, and I know there are other, other tutorials out there that show, um, you know, different ways that you can make feathers with yarn or, you know, strings or whatever. But that was the one I, I picked to follow. So I'm doing three and um, I'm going to do one on each side and one in the center. And the one in the center will be a little bit bigger. So like with the uh, the hangy bits there, I just take the paper clip to loop it through so I can get it in through the... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just picking the center because, I mean, it's the center. And a little bit of... You know, a little bit of a quirk there and just has to be centered. <laughs> and it's getting, you know, once I push everything around the way I want it, that's going to, oh, I had it backwards, huh? That's going to hang over top. So, um, you know, it's not like going to hang in between those longer strands. It's going to be on top of them. And I thought about adding, like, some funky beads or trying to do some knots and I just thought, no, I kind of just want it to be organically sitting there. I don't want it to, I don't know. I just think that, that with the, with the paint and the feathers that anything else added to it would have probably just been a little too much, you know, um, See, I'm looking at the paint and I realized that there on the left, my little sun line there kind of went up a little bit. I correct that later. Um, and then my V, I, I'm telling you, it looks weird. See, it looks straight there, but kind of straight there. And I tried to go back over and touch up the paint again. So I've got all my three lines on here. Now I'm, I'm making the feather. So you take these, you take two pieces, and you go one under, one over. And, uh. So I put that piece under and I'll put this piece over. And what you do is you loop the little tail ends, the two little tail ends on either side. You loop it through the, the round loop bit there. And then you just pull it into a square knot. Now, I messed up this step. You're supposed to go like under you go under over and then for your next one you go over under so if i have the loop on the left then and it's under the spine or whatever then the next one down you put that same left hand loop over it goes on top um i know it's kind of weird to explain see i i did the under loop twice in a row and you don't want to do that because then it just kind of, it looks a little muddy. So you've got it, it's under on the left. And then this one will be over on the right. You want to alternate. You do over, under, over, under. But I figured it out and, and fixed it after the fact. <laughs> but now you've seen it twice, so I guess it worked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you just pull it. You pull it, you, you stuff those little tails through and you just pull it tight. And there's that. So this is when it starts to, um, you know, you fill it up as far as you want to go. If you want a long feather, obviously you would cut way more strands. I think I did about 20. And yeah, so I have all my strands tied. Now I'm going to take a piece of cardstock <clears throat> and I'm just going to cut like a feather shape to glue on the back there to stabilize it and kind of help me keep the shape because I use that skinny twine that you can get at the, at the dollar store and it's unruly. <laughs> it didn't work the way I wanted it to. I wanted to try to fray it out and brush it out, but it didn't work out that way. So I just had to go with, I just had to go with it, but I wanted to try and make it take shape a little better so I thought well if I can glue a little back to it see I'm drawing it out and um, 
I'll cut that out and, and take the hot glue and glue to the back. Um, and you'll see I actually end up trimming it because it was just too big. I just need it enough to secure it and then add a little bit on the edges of that to hold the twine down and kind of shape it down in that feathery shape a little bit. And from there, then I can, you know, from there is trimming it and, yep. So cut it out. There we go. See, it's a little too wide. So I want to glue that down there. <clears throat> I'll just take hot glue and glue it down and spread it out. I, I did tie a knot. I tied a knot and I don't know why I didn't record that. I tied a knot to keep everything together also at the very bottom of that spine string, uh, which would be like the spine of your feather or whatever, the quill. I, I don't know, whatever you call it. <clears throat> so a little bit of hot glue to just keep everything together. I hate this glue gun. I got it at Dollar General <clears throat> and uh, it was like six six bucks I think they were charging for it or they were charging for it. And literally I used it like twice and the trigger broke. Yeah. I have a, a two dollar, a tiny little two dollar one I bought like six years ago and it's still perfectly fine. It just uses those tiny little glue sticks and I don't have any more <laughs> and at the time I was like oh yeah well this is you know bigger ones I need lots of glue so yeah there you can see I I trimmed that one and that's my my middle feather I trimmed that one up or I cut out the, the little backer and now here I'm showing that uh, what I'm doing is taking the glue and putting it right there on the edge and now I'm going to, while it's, it's hot, I'm going to shape where I want those feather bits to lay. So, you know, try to push them down a little so they kind of fall. Because, <laughs> again, this twine was unruly. It did not want to, it did not want to brush out, comb out, uh, you know, and I, I probably could have pressed it. Now that I'm thinking of it, I probably could have taken an iron to it. And maybe I will end up doing that if for some reason I just look at it hanging up on my wall and say, yeah, those feathers are driving me nuts. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I used a few extra strands on this feather because it's the one that, that I wanted it to be the biggest. So. Yeah, I'm just adding more glue here. Taking, getting that shape squared away the way I want it. all sealed in there and and I took it and I went ahead with a line of glue along the edges on the underside to also help reinforce where I wanted that stuff to lay down at and um, you know be stuck there <laughs> I mean it is hot glue so it's probably not gonna last forever I mean I could have probably used d6000 and, and made it more secure adhesive there but for for the video for you know what it is I just was like eh, I'll just use up this hot glue so maybe I can chuck away the glue gun I don't like pushing the the hot glue tube <laughs> through to get any hot glue out, I have to like physically force it in there. All right, and I must have shifted my camera and didn't realize. So I'm just trimming off the and, and kind of trying to shape it up a little bit. 
Um, <laughs> man, the first one, it turned out a lot better. I don't know. I guess I was just... I wasn't really in a hurry or anything. Just, I don't know, maybe I was running out of creative steam at the moment. And it's out of frame. That's fantastic. Because I'm an idiot. Okay, here we go. Just cutting up some more, trimming some more. Um, it's like when I cut my kid's hair. <laughs> Just trim, trim. <laughs> take a, take off the split ends, I guess, right? And now I'm trimming those bottom uh, strands. So... I just took a, you know, kind of took a ruler and just went in an angle. I'm trying to spread them out and, and get them where I can cut them. Uh, and, and so I don't completely screw up the symmetry of it. Um, I, what I ended up doing then is measuring on the other side to get the, to get the right heights. Because for whatever reason I don't have a... I couldn't find anything for... To give me the proper ankle. And I know it... it <laughs> they look too short on that side. But they're really not. It's so weird. It's just the way it was laying... All right, now I'm going to go ahead and glue on my hanger. And I just use these funky beads that I found at the thrift store. Um, they're actually a, a gold tone. They're not like shiny gold. They're like dull brass. Shiny, kind of shiny, kind of dull brass. Um, so I just took some brown acrylic and painted on them. Uh, and... I only did a couple coats, and as you can see from that one gold bit there, that it's it's flaked off in that spot. But um, and I, you won't be able to see it on camera very well, but it kind of gives it, it. It almost looks like a darker wood, or um, you know, it's it just gives it a little bit of depth the way the the way the paint dried and it, whatever you know some layers that ended up on it kind of was a cool effect so yeah just hot glue this down um and these are not round i i don't even know they're they look like they might be heart shaped but they're kind of not it's they remind me of buckeyes actually um for, you know any ohioans in the house you'll know what i'm talking about um the the thing from the buckeye tree i mean this it's kind of what they look like um, I don't know, but they're not round wooden beads. These are resin or plastic or something. But they had kind of a texture on the outside, so the paint did stick okay. I think I just knocked it and uh, chipped that paint off a little. So it's just sitting there curing. And like I said, I have that twist tie on there to hang it up and kind of get it centered where I want it on the wall. And there's the final look. That's what it looks like hanging up on the wall. Um, you know, I, I'm not really into the boho thing, but it turned out pretty cool. Um, you know, I've got the... Got it almost symmetrical. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all, my mom thought it was fan She loves it. So I might just gift it to her. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think I should do with this? Should I give it to my mom? I don't know. But it was really cool, you know. I mean, it's something that I've had. And I mean, I've used it. I, I set it up on the table at Christmas and Thanksgiving to put the, you know, to put the pans on. And, you know, it just doesn't fit my, my thoughts, so... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments and I will check you later.